Hello again. Uh, this is the first video in the new series that aims to fill the vacuum in the channel schedule while I am working on the custom rollback multiplayer network module for our project arena. In it, I will try to find some new audience by releasing some content aimed at newbies in Godot. However, I will do it with a twist of respecting the viewer. This series won't be a newbie slop. It will cover some extremely basic things that lie in the very roots of understanding Godot with the notion that viewer has an experience in programming or engineering, but doesn't have any previous Godot knowledge. Welcome to the Advanced Newbism series. The first video is kinda non-specific. It targets a broad and general question of how you can actually learn this new software piece, what parts of your experience can help you to learn Godot specifics, and the general roadmap I will suggest you to grow from opening the engine editor for the first time towards being a power user who's slightly salty at developers for their good for everyone, best for no one design choices in your advanced knowledge field of choice. The first chapter is about escaping the tutorial hell. There is a fuck ton of Godot tutorials out there. Different versions, creators, game genres, 2D, 3D, different styles, yada yada. First things first, you will need a formulaic approach. Tutorial is a video that is usually aimed at illustrating some parts of the engine through taking these parts and solving some simple isolated problem with them. What tutorials rarely do is acknowledge that an actual project consists of problems that are not simple and not isolated. And for the quickest success, you, dear viewer, need first to formulate a concrete pipeline, an algorithm that takes any random tutorial as input data, processes it, and ideally returns you digested knowledge applicable to your project and to your problems. Honorable mentions, watching a video 20 times, and watching a video like 2 or 3 times and conspecting it into some service like Notion or into some mind map or into your paper pocketbook. Kinda meh if you ask me, but it is better than watching a video once and jumping to the next, or to blindly recreate the project. And these methods actually tap into the right action direction. They just aren't very reliable and are based on the hope that your brain will do automatically the thing we are trying to make it do consciously. Uh, disclaimer, there are different ways to achieve this. People are unique and beautiful and different approaches can suit you more than me. I'm just covering the way I learn the fuck out of the subject the fastest way possible if I need to, and I don't claim this is the last ultimate truth of the world. If you find other approaches better, do them and probably comment under this video to describe them. Maybe you will do a good thing and help others. So, first thing that you need to engrave in your head is that knowledge is bullshit. Knowledge or information is mostly a useless abstraction. It is hard to describe, it is hard to measure and quantify, it is hard to test for existence in one's head and it almost doesn't help you to solve your problems in a vacuum. The much more useful thing that we will actually hunt is experience. Experience can be easily described, experience has simple existence test and experience can be easily measured and quantified into practices. And the core idea behind most of the successful learning pipelines is to find a way to take an input data and turn it into the biggest amount of experience or practices that you can possibly do. This is what we will do as well. Open a spreadsheet processor of choice uh, or your paper book and start a table. The first column is always a practice you can define. And then set up several other columns that probably are formulated as questions, like do I understand fully what happens. In what category I can put this practice, for example, it is an interface preference or a system design or a protocol or some programming principle or pattern implementation, etc. What pros of using it can I see? What cons of using it can I see? What was achieved with it in the example video? Do I agree with its usage being a good thing? Do I know any alternative ways to achieve this? Do I see myself using it in my project? How can it be applied to my problems? What immediate tags or Godot keywords can I associate intuitively with it? Of course, you can skip some of these questions or add your own. Nothing is set in stone here, I just throw examples. And when your table is ready, open a victim video and destroy it with attention and accuracy of a mad scientist who is also a mad surgeon in a spare time. You want as much shit you can grab. 
This is not a staged analyze, it is a stage to maniacally write down every fucking thing you can see and define as a smallest isolated action or trait, up to naming conventions up to the order of variable declaration, up to the amount of empty lines between functions written, up to mouse fucking movements. <laughs> you need to be futuristic detective from 80s sci-fi movie, frantically enlarging the photo of a crime scene to see a reflection of murder's face in the polished vase on the table. If you decided to deconstruct someone's tutorial into atoms, you probably consider the auto a skilled Godot user, and to become one someday, you will need to go inside that person's head as deep as you can. Do not be afraid to write down things that seem to be small and insignificantly cringe, like interface usage. Firstly, no one except you won't ever see that table. Secondly, to have an insignificant practice written down is a much better thing than having an actual useful practice be missed one day. Like, in my first weeks of using Godot, I made scenes from zero via the top menu, clicking scene, new scene and starting to work there. And my world exploded when I saw someone casually set up their shit in the main branch with access to other scene parts and then just right-clicking a node and going save branches scene. Since you are new, and you know nothing, every single tiny thing can enhance your workflows, so look close and inhale every click of the video you watch. It will be a painfully slow process, usually it takes me about 6 times the length of the video to quotes watch it one time, this way writing shit down. On the brighter side, we part ways through the video now. You are done. You have everything you need from it, close your YouTube tab. The next step is to slowly process all the practices you managed to define and fill the rest of the table. By far the most important column is do you fully understand what happens. When you are new, the answers mostly will be negative. And that's a good thing, because now you at least moved yourself from an aware ignorance bucket to aware underinformed bucket. What I usually do is I go do I understand the practice fully, if positive I skip categorization and feel pros and cons. If I am confident I feel them in the right way, I go to the my problems adoption column. If I don't fully understand what happened, first I am trying to guess the categorization of the practice and fill the keywords column. And then when I have category and keywords, guess what? I google the shit out of differently formulated questions regarding the thing I just witnessed. And ideally I do it until I can fill the do I understand what happened column with a positive answer and then move on as described above. Now, what and why we are trying to achieve in the grand scheme of things? Again, Another disclaimer, I don't have any biological or psychological academia knowledge. I am not a behavioral scientist, this is just a metaphor that I will use to forward my view of the world to you. You are watching a video that is aimed at people who have programming or engineering or even other game engines backgrounds, but don't have experiences required to work with Godot. If we imagine mathematically all possible practical things that you can achieve with Godot and throw them as points onto a plane, we can declare that your project's current state is one point and your desired ideally solved problem is another point. And then your brain sort of works like a GOP AI decision maker that can find several possible solutions to your problem, evaluate them and choose the most optimal one. In this metaphor's language, your prior programming experience is the decision machine that calculates the pros and cons weights. So opening Godot for the first time in your life, you already have a decent understanding of what might be working generally and what is total bullshit. But since you have no practical Godot experience, your plane literally lacks points. You have a calibrator, but you have no nodes to evaluate paths. And by getting the highest possible amount of learned practices on how to do things, you populate your plane of decision options with available for puffing points. Now, this picture is for robots. This is literally a GOP algorithm visualization. In reality, the grey slug in your skull is a very lazy thing that hates to change its habits. If you really have a solid programming experience, 
most probably, instead of seeing a huge amount of puffs, you already have a strong opinion on what should be done and why. And then you have this ethereal ideal picture in your mind and search for the points that fit into this predefined curve the best way. It doesn't ruin the big picture metaphor though. To reiterate, your decisions are okay, but your goal is to widen your practical options arsenal as quick as possible and you're golden. Now, shortly, what to do if for some reason you are watching this video while not having neither programming background no good experience. Well, in prior metaphor language, uh, your options plane doesn't have points and simultaneously your internal paths calculator is untrained and uncalibrated. In this scenario, you will need to solve two problems at once. What I recommend for absolute zeros is to literally copy the tutorial projects, but in a smart way. Instead of downloading the code from GitHub, try to recreate the full tutorial demonstration project on your own, as tutorial auto explained in the video, and get some bumps hit on your face. And then, after you have an implemented tutorial thingy on hands, try to recreate the project again, but in some other way. Refactor shit. <laughs> if you watch the tutorial with giant ass thousand line script, refactor it into a state machine. If you watch a state machine tutorial, try and refactor it into a thousand line script. If you saw a composition demonstration with model nodes, destroy it and try to use inheritance and vice versa. If you saw a state machine enemy tutorial, try to refactor it into behavior tree and vice versa. Abstain from opinions about implementation being right. Do several implementations of one thing, then listen to your feelings, compare pros and cons of different approaches analyze stuff. And by seeing how different paths can lead to one final result, you can start to calibrate your inner path estimation feeling. Finishing with tutorials theme, let's discuss several Godot specific tips that will make your progress faster. Again, we follow the one best trajectory, widening your practical options pool. And to do it, you need to learn the goddamn editor and APIs. Learn interfaces. Literally find materials about editor's interface. What tabs do? How can you manipulate them? How can you change layouts? What every single one of those little buttons does? Look at what import tab does and its settings. What inspector tab has and don't forget the note tab. Visit every menu point from the top row. Open project settings. Read every single one of them. Click shit. Don't be afraid to experiment. Familiarize yourself with this row of sin instruments. Click all those small tweaky things and see what happens. Oh, I have a text file observer here. Thanks, I hate it. Ah, oh, my scripting tab can be made into a separate window. Ah, oh, I can manage how the shit looks in my scene while being developed, etc. Next, do another pass and right click shit. A lot of things have a right click contextual menus. Oh, we can manage tabs. Oh, we can do a lot with our nodes. And the most important, most of these contextual menus have a button to check out docs on the issue. Click and treat the fuck out of it. The most powerful button in all Godot, no joking. Next tip is very similar in nature. Grow a habit of almost automatically control clicking any green text you see and haven't clicked for a day or two. Such things as vector3, transform, string, array, dictionary, resource, node 3D, your life is made from these things. For a quick progress, you need to learn the built-in API to pretty much remember everything that it has. Vector3 has tools to pretty much one line solve most of the ge geometry problems. Transform 3D, same thing. Moreover, things that you can see rarely might have the thing you search for that is already solved just by having an engine. Take Camera 3D class for example. Imagine you work on some strategy game or a city builder. Either way, you will have a Camera 3D node in your scene. And if your lazy ass skips reading the docs page for that class, I guarantee you that once upon a time, you will spend like two weeks from implementing from the ground a feature that already exists in Camera 3D API as a one-liner. Probably one of these. Again, the sole thing we pursue is to add awareness of practical measures points that are present on your path and board, and like half of those points is the stuff the engine API providers had kindly built for you in the past. And 
the final tip of sorts, while you are new here, type your things slowly. Godot has an autocomplete feature. It isn't an intelligence by any means, it just searches the API for words that sounds familiar. And it's great, actually, because this feature can be a great source of <laughs> quotes green words to control click if you feel that you have read vector3 docs for a hundred times already. For example, we have a plain class here. It is very powerful if you want to go very deep into some advanced animation or geometry stuff. But you literally have no links from vector3 into this page. Your only chance to find it is to either randomly see it in the autocomplete options or google some non-intuitive geometry problem solution and hope that those who answer you know about its existence. And there are many such gems hidden in the docs that are extremely useful for advanced users, but tragically almost don't have external links in other classes pages. And in the end of the video, when 90% of you clicked away already, let's say the philosophical wisdom bombing piece. This is a two-piece advice. You are entering a new field. Things are new here, and you don't understand shit. Start to copy other people's works. The more the better. The stricter the better. You can have your little artistic input, but this is just a spice on top of a food plate. In the start of the journey, your competence level is zero, and the quickest progress you can ever achieve lies in mercilessly copying competent people's works. Again and again. You do it, but on the background you must have your hand on the pulse of exactly one feeling. One metric of success. Do you understand what do you do and why? And the moment you catch it, it is in your best interest to stop copying. From that exact moment, create your own things. You can enjoy other works, you can be inspired by ideas, you can learn from best still, but from that moment, copying is forbidden. Because on the first half of the way, from zero to competence, your skills worth nothing and your ideas probably are not that genius. So by working independent from zero, you are bound to create worse things and extract worse lessons out of your experiences. Or not worse, but much slower. <laughs> so by being proud and arrogantly refusing to copy shit from the start, you do stifle your progress's tempo. However, when you cross the competence line, you start to have nice skills and you start to have your unique ideas that have a chance to not be garbage. And from that line, you start to stifle your progress's temper by not stopping to copy things. Because if you have a thing to copy, it means that someone had already made it and went further in the direction of the Olympus mountain, by their own road. And at best, you follow them with a leg, being a pathetic creature that refuses to take a lead. And at worst, you follow them with a leg, while simultaneously ignoring the fact that you have your own path to your own Olympus that is located in different area and is not equal to that person's end goal at all. That's it. I have at least three more video ideas for this series. Uh, the following ones won't be that generalistic and will be about actual Godot stuff. Peace.